This is John Immervar, and thanks so much for joining me for today's visit to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Today we're going to talk about a favorite subject of mine, hands in art. And we'll start with this remarkable sculpture by Auguste Rodin. Rodin believed that hands were in many ways even more expressive than a person's face. I'd like to begin our investigation with this portrait of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Mifflin by the great American artist of the 18th century, John Singleton Copley. It's a dual portrait, and I think it tells us something about their relationship. Notice that she's more brightly lit, farther toward us, and looking at us. He, on the other hand, more dimly lit, in the background, and looking at her. To me, one of the things that suggests is that this portrait is about his great love for her. Now, when we look at the hands, we see that same relationship expressed. In his right hand, he holds this book pointing right at her. With his left hand, he reaches out to delicately graze her fingers as she does her loom work. And again, the hands also suggest his love for her. Sometimes a small gesture in a hand can suggest a new meaning in a painting. And that's nowhere more true than in one of the most dramatic paintings in the museum, The Lifeline by Winslow Homer. What we're seeing is a rescue. A ship, you can see it in the upper left-hand corner, has floundered on the rocks. And they've rigged up this zip line so that a rescuer can go out to the ship and bring a survivor back to the shore. Now, when I first saw this painting, I assumed that the woman in the painting was unconscious. And I thought, she'll never really know who it was who rescued her. And when I saw the cloth blown across the rescuer's face, I thought, Perhaps the painting is about anonymous heroism, suggesting we don't even need to know who this man is. But then someone pointed out a detail to me that I'd never seen before. Look at her hand. She's clutching the rope. That suggests that she is conscious. And that opens up a new meaning of the painting in addition to the one I'd first seen that suggests that they're in a relationship. Notice that he's holding her with a very intimate embrace. She is swooning back, as in passion. So, in this version, they probably will have a relationship after the rescue. And of course, suppose people ask them how they met. Well, they'll just have to say, we met online. Now, let's jump back 400 years to Northern Europe, the area that's now Holland and Belgium, and look at a painting, Christ and the Virgin, by Robert Campen we see a picture of Mary and Jesus. It's rather an unusual picture. In most of the pictures of Mary and Jesus, uh, Jesus is an infant or he is dying on the cross. But here they're both adults. And the picture explains something important to us about the theology of Mary. We are human and so we have a relationship to Mary. And as you can see from her hands, she prays to Jesus because she is Jesus' mother, Jesus hears her prayers, and then he blesses us with his hands in this special Christian gesture of blessing. But now, look at Jesus' left hand, which adds a new element to the picture. As a result of her prayers, he seems to be reaching into our space. And many of the pictures of this time were in a frame that looked like a window. And so Mary's prayer is bringing Jesus into our world. Now, let's look at another painting from the same period. Roger van der Weyden's Crucifixion. It's really one of the most famous paintings in the museum. Here we see Jesus at the moment of his death. The sky has gone black. His soul is ascending to heaven, as we can see from the flutter of his loincloth. And over on the left we see Mary, so overcome with grief that she has collapsed into the arms of John the Evangelist. But when we look at her hands, we see a new detail. She is still praying to Jesus. So although she's overwhelmed by grief, she has not lost her faith. And now when we look at Jesus' hand, we see another detail. In the moment of his death, He's still making that special Christian gesture of blessing. So the hands give the painting rather a richer meaning. 
at the darkest moment in Jesus' life, at the agony of death, Mary is still praying to Jesus, and Jesus still blessing us. For our last example of hands in art, let's visit a picture from the same period, The Marriage of the Virgin. We don't know the name of the artist. He's always known as the master of the Tiburtine Sybil. The top half of this painting has a very interesting story, but we're not going to talk about that. We'll look at the bottom half, where we see the marriage of Mary on the right and Joseph on the left. People who study clothing from the 1400s always like this picture because it gives us so much detail about how wealthy people dressed and what kind of shoes they wore. And when we talk about the picture, uh, the curators often say that the man on the left and the woman on the right are the donors who paid for the picture. The reason they say that is, first of all, those two are farthest forward. They're wearing the fanciest clothing. And if you notice, each of them has this rather distinctive gold jewelry on their necklace that seems to be matching. So that again suggests husband and wife. Now, I was explaining this to a group of seventh graders, and I was saying this woman on the left is the uh, wife of the man on the right. And this kid says to me, hey, if she's his wife, how come the man behind her is groping her? I was shocked. I had no idea. I had never noticed that tiny hand. I didn't know what to say. But I came back and looked at the picture in more detail, and I noticed a couple of things. First of all, if you look at the man on the left, you see he has this rather unusual wavy blonde hair. Then if you look on the right at these two young men, including the man who has his hand on the waist of Mrs. Donor, they look like brothers to me, and they both have that same wavy blonde hair. Then the two younger women in front of them also have wavy blonde hair. And so I got the picture that perhaps this isn't just Mr. and Mrs. Donor, but a group portrait of the whole donor family, Mr. and Mrs., the two boys, and the two girls. And of course, I was very struck by the young woman in uh, green pointing to Mary's hair, as though to say, we all have wavy blonde hair, and Mary does too. So thank you so much for joining me for this visit to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. If you read the description for this video, you'll see more information about the paintings and links to the images. Please visit my channel for more videos on the great art at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Thank you.